So uh, real quick, Alpha Anywhere allows you to generate next uh, to create next generation mobile and web development uh, capabilities. It's codeless, but it has a rich development environment for advanced requirements because we understand you, you know you got that last five ten percent you always need to do. And then it also has very powerfully a seamless mobile app generation capability, which will allow you to actually take your solutions and generate native mobile applications that will run on different platforms. It, the neatest thing about Alpha is the fact that you use the same development tool to generate uh, web-based systems, systems for uh, mobile phones or tablets, even desktop, and it all uses the same technology. And the beauty of that is training and speed of development. It's built on industry standards. It's HTML5, JavaScript, CSS, and connects to standard industry pieces such as SQL databases, .NET, and other facilities. The important thing about that is as the industry progresses, as improvements come along, we get to take advantage of that to improve our systems also. It is a codeless development platform, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. The focus on it is to make it easy for you to create those quick prototypes and those initial versions of your system but what's very important is we do not limit you. Underneath the covers is a complete and full rich development environment that allows you to get in there and do your own coding, do your own capabilities, and you're never going to be limited by the tool in terms of what you need to do or what you want to do. One of the most powerful capable capabilities that's been added now with the Alpha Anywhere product is seamless mobile app generation. And basically the way that works is that you use the Alpha Anywhere solution to generate your uh, app, and I'm going to actually show you how that is done in a few minutes here. Then what happens, which is really cool, is with PhoneGap build from Adobe Systems, we actually package up that application and create a native app that will run on iOS, Android, uh, Windows Mobile, and therefore you can get that native experience including tapping everything within the native environment, i.e. the hardware of the mobile platform to enhance your application. And I'm going to actually show you real quick how that would work within the system here. So a very powerful capability for you to build solutions. And we have a very diverse and strong support community and development community that you can tap into to help you build these solutions. So what I'd like to do next is I've kind of set the framework for what Alpha can do. Let me actually show you something that we have done with it. So I'm popping over into, I'm actually running a Mac with Parallel, so I'm in my Windows environment. This is actually the Alpha Anywhere development environment. I'm going to come back to this in a few moments here. But the thing I'd like to go ahead and show you real quick is a existing running system. So I'm going to log on to a online system, fully securitized. It has a extremely strong security framework built into Alpha that you can tap into. So for your banking applications, et cetera, that you can leverage that. But this is a basically a cash flow forecasting tool. And the way the cash flow uh, forecasting tool, think of it as you're doing uh, business analysis for a enterprise. And you want to put together budgets and then track the actual budget. So this was built with that in mind. First and foremost, it was built to uh, consolidate and allow everybody to work on the same data model at the same time. This is a fully web deployed solution. Everything you see here is working through the web browser, so you could have people all over the world tapping into that central mark, uh, model. It's also very visual in nature, so as you change and update information, you're getting dynamic graphing of the data with the analysis that's being done from the financial data behind the scenes. And this is very rich in terms of including both pie charts, but also we have uh, line charts. We're tapping into some nice user interface abilities. So it's very quick and easy for people to see the information that they're most interested with, and it's got all the dynamic capabilities uh, to show and visualize that information. And again, everything you see here is being done with uh, the um, with the system. And Dave, just want to make sure we're okay and everything's coming through okay. Yep, uh, sound and video is coming through great. Thanks. Okay, good. I just I wanted to make sure I hadn't lost anybody there. Um, so to show you the power of it is that um, not only is it got a full capability for visualization, but we can go into say an area, and you know you basically think of it as a spreadsheet style interface where you have a whole bunch of different data elements, 
and you log into it, and we're using a tab UI in this case to allow you to edit data within the system. And in this case, this server is actually based in Singapore, and so we're actually running halfway across the world. But you'll notice that we have a very rich user interface, including tabs, because there's a huge amount of data that goes into a financial application. Plus, we have very flexible uh, interfaces to, like, basically in this case, tag the different items that are associated with it. Also built into this, and this is all part of the alpha interface capability, are rich constructs. So for now, we're just doing, like, say, a percentage increase. But if I wanted to, I could say, okay, I want to do a set of uh, monthly increases, and it has all that so I can quickly enter and update my data model. And then once I've done that, it updates the full amount, and all of my home graphs will be updated and uh, coordinated in real time so I'm actually seeing the impact of my thing. So it dramatically reduces the amount of time from data entry to then actually seeing the result of the, uh, and the nice thing you'll see is that I can have very sophisticated data models being managed by the system. Another key aspect of Alpha, which is really important for the financial industry, is the extensive reporting capability built into Alpha. Alpha has a full-blown report builder, a la, you know, Crystal Reports, built into the system, and it's tightly integrated between the back office, but also more important, the user interface. And to show you an example of that is, let's say I'm working on this uh, data model, our financial model, and I want to go ahead and look at a balance sheet for my first year. So it's dynamically generating this report with our report engine, which runs on the server, and presenting to the user in HTML the information they want to see. And one thing that's really powerful about this is the fact that within this is the um, ability to display it as HTML, so it works very quickly on mobile platforms, such as laptops or, more importantly, uh, tablets. Now, another thing that's really important about this solution is the fact that you can then quickly export this information out to, say, a PDF, if you want to use it as a PDF, or more importantly, it's got built into the reporting capability the ability to generate an Excel spreadsheet. And let me open that up. It's opening up as we go through this. Bear with me. Takes a moment there. So what it's doing is downloading the, uh, actually, let me go back to my solution here. Come on, let's go. There we are. And let me uh, let me go ahead and open up this spreadsheet. There we go. So now it's taken my financial spreadsheet that was kind of in a view only, but it's created a Excel spreadsheet. And I didn't have to do any coding to make this happen. Basically, once I had finished generating my report, the system automatically understood how I could generate this spreadsheet from it, which is incredibly powerful because when you're in a financial situation, you can't predict every kind of data manipulation that people would like to do. Now, another thing that's very powerful about that reporting uh, system, excuse me as I jump back into it, is the fact that you could take full control over this and actually dynamically generate your own Excel spreadsheets using the back office technology. So you could actually create uh, unique spreadsheets just programmatically within the system. And as you can see, we have an enormous amount of reporting in this application that's available for the individual users there. And we're able to do branch dashboards where we can actually do drill it down kind of dashboards where within that I have a dumb bunch of series of branches and I can actually pick one of these and it would actually generate instead of a, a dashboard for the full level, it does it for the lower level. And again, this uses all the same technology and so that it's actually very straightforward for you to build these kind of visual powerful user interfaces for the individuals that are, are using it in the system from that standpoint. So this is an example of a online web browser delivered full financial system that includes data entry, data manipulation, reporting, visualization, all using this tool. And what's important for you to understand is that the look and feel of this is not dictated by alpha. This is all being used off the shelf CSS and HTML to generate the look and feel. In fact, I can go ahead and show you another system. This is not a financial system, but this is actually a quality control system. And this is using the same Alpha tool, but you'll notice that I have a complete and different look and feel for my application. But this is all Alpha being used to build this, including um, you know uh, grids and data entry forms and other things along those lines. So all this is built in alpha, and I'm able to reface it very quickly with CSS 
and HTML to give the end client that feel, that, that branding that they would like for their solution. And one other thing that I wanted to show you that's very, very powerful is that Alpha is an open solution. If you want to tap into third-party services within your Alpha solution, you can do so. And an example of that is that in this quality management system, if I scroll down, I have an area here called files. And if I upload a file, it will actually upload this directly into a secure Dropbox file. And then once it's there, I associate it with this. So I can actually literally click on it, and it will open this file within Dropbox. And so I'm not even storing these files on my local system. I'm actually storing them in Dropbox and using the Dropbox security system to access that information directly from within my application. So I took a very powerful third-party solution and integrated it into Alpha so that I could leverage all their power. And people love this because they love the ability to in integrate and access the files through Dropbox or through the user interface with the right security protocols. So that's the kind of situation from that standpoint there. So that's a quick and sort of uh, fast overview of what you can build with Alpha Anywhere. And then at this point in time, I want to take a little step and, and actually show you maybe how we can start developing some of these interfaces quickly and effectively and talk a little bit more about the mobile capabilities within that. So with that, uh, Dave, do, you have, do we have any immediate questions or anything like that before I dive into the next section of my presentation? I'm sorry. This time it was me who was on mute. <laughs> Not um, a second. We do, no. in fact, have questions. So let me oh, just no, no problem. I just want to make sure uh, we're on track. People can hear me. And if there's any immediate questions at this point in time. Yeah. Hang on one second. Let me just go through them here real quick. Sure. Um, and then we'll get into the mobile portion of it and the actual development portion of it. Do -do -do. Uh, one question is, it, the development environment, is it is it for Windows only? We do get that question a fair amount. Yes, that is correct. The development environment operates within Windows. And in this case, I'm using uh, a MacBook Pro with uh, Parallels, and it works beautifully. I also use, uh, just, just so you know, the uh, I use Parallels also with Alpha Anywhere, and it, and it does work well. So you do, in fact, need to get a copy of Windows, and you need to install Parallels. But it works very seamlessly on a Mac if that's your preferred uh, environment and development. Exactly. Um, so here's here's another great question here. Um, if you're building for mobile, which we all are, do you just code a smaller UI, or does the platform form try to translate a larger format interface so that it's appropriate for phones? It does a combination of both, and I'll show you that when I get into the development environment. Is that most often you're going to actually design it for the mobile platform. Well, what's really neat about uh, the Alpha Anywhere product is that it can dynamically detect the platform it's running on and serve up different sort of flavors of the user interface. So you could have sort of an optimized phone screen or an optimized tablet screen or an optimized um, web browser screen. And it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And then you can, if you want to optimize for that specific platform, you can detect for it and show the user just what that means for that user interface. Um, if you're using like a tablet and you just use an off the shelf, it's going to compress it and try to help you out as much as possible. So it has a lot of smarts built into it. So um, I guess just one more question, which is, hang on, let me just grab it here again. Sure. Um, can you talk about how the interface is actually built? And actually, I have a feeling you're going to come to this next. That's uh, if it's not yeah, coded. Great... And are there built-in charts? Okay, yes, and yes, and I'll show you how that works from there. So I'm going over into my uh, my development environment. And what I'd like to do for the balance of this presentation is actually just go you and show you how you can generate a really quick mobile application, and then we can touch on the graphing and the other pieces that are associated with it. So I'm in my development environment, and again, we tap into CSS and JavaScript. So all of those libraries that are available out there, you can tap into and integrate into your solution. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new web component. And what a web component is, is sort of a building block for building your application. So I'm going to go up here and click the New button. I'm building a web component. And what I'm going to focus on is a UX component. And think of it as a form. 
is that it's a form component that you will build your representation with. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. What's really nice about Alpha is that we have a whole bunch of pre-made templates. So you don't have to actually start always with a blank page, but you can start with a, a series of other things there. And in fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like to uh, start with a panel card with header, title, and button. And I'll show you this a little bit more in, in as we go through there. But I like to start with templates because it actually gives me sort of a leg up in the generation of my uh, system. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. It has some help built into it. And so now what I'm in is my sort of my form building environment. So on the left, I have all the different controls and other things that are available for my form. The one, the, in the middle is my UX component where I'm actually developing that. And then on the right-hand side is uh, the um, pr properties for each one of those. And actually, you know what? Let me, I apologize. I selected the wrong template. Let me go ahead and go through here. Uh, bear with me. New web component, UX. And the one we want here is, uh, there we go, panel navigator with header. So it brings it up from there. Okay. So what we have is a pre-built sort of form. And actually, let me go ahead and run it and show you what it looks like. So we have, we go into our working preview. And built in, you'll already see that Alpha has a built-in mobile simulator. So you can actually get the look and feel for how your system is going to operate right within the system. And I can be looking at it in like a, phone format, or I could be looking at it in a iPad format, say horizontal, vertical, or a phone format from that standpoint. And this is actually a running little modal application. You have a static sort of information on the first page. I can click this next button here in the upper right, and it will take me to my second page or second card where I have some more content. And I can click the next button, it goes to my third card, and I have a third card our content there. Nothing super exciting, but again, the neat thing about it is that Alpha is handling all the screen stuff along with the navigation and animation, and it's tapping into the underlying hardware of the eventual device to do so. So it's very smooth and very interactive. So let me go back into the design information. So the, basically the way this is structured is that I have what's called a panel navigator, which kind of controls swiping and the movement from one panel card to another. Each of my items are in a separate panel card. So think of a panel card as a card that swipes in and out of view at any one time. So I have a first panel card, I have a second panel card, and I have a third panel card. And the panel navigator determines which part is visible at any time and controls all that there. So the application I want to do is make like a very simple contact manager. So I'm going to go to panel card one. I've got some static text there. I'm going to go ahead and select that static text and delete it. And then I'm going to select that panel card. And what I want to do is put in what's called a list component. So I want to show a list of customers on that first page. OK? So I give it a name, and I click OK. Now I've got this new list control, and I can double click, select it, and double click on it. Now, a cool thing about a list control is basically it's, it's a standard list, and you'll see how it operates in a few moments. Well, one of the most powerful things about it is that I can actually populate that list with different sources of data. I could use SQL data, which we'll do for the purposes of our presentation today, DBF files for people who are still using that. I could have a static list of information. Let's say it's a menu or something like that. But I can actually even write custom code in the background to call web services so I can dynamically grab JSON and, and turn it into a list, and it's very powerful there. But for our purposes, we're going to actually use SQL. So I'm selecting SQL as the data source type. I'm going to select my connection string. And what a connection string is a setup sort of a connection to a data source. In this case, for this demo, it's an access database sitting on here. But this could be Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, QuickBooks, any kind of different data source that you want to connect to. And the neat thing about it is with the connection string, Alpha abstracts the contact to that database so that it makes things easier to use, but you do still have the full power to connect in and use store procedures and everything else that's within your data source uh, database environment. So I've selected my connection string. The method I'm going to do is I'm going to grab fields from a table. So I click on table name, and you'll notice something right away. 
it actually inspects the database for me and shows me what's available within that database. And I can look at tables, I can look at views. So in this case, I just want to look at the tables. So the neat thing about this is that you don't have to remember what the database looks like. It actually shows you what it looks like from there. So in our case, we're going to select the table customers because we're going to use the customer data for our uh, demonstration here. So now that I've selected the table, I'm now going to select the field list. So I'm going to go ahead and click on here, and it shows me all the fields within that table. In our case, I'm going to select all of them because what I'm going to show you in a little bit of how to make a disconnected application. So I actually want to load up that data into the user interface the first time I touch it. So I'm going to pull back all that data so it's available for my use. And I click OK. So I've selected my connection. I've selected my table name. I've also selected my filter, or I'm sorry, my field list. Now, very powerful within the system is I can filter that data. So when a person logs into the system and we use the built-in uh, security framework, I can actually find out who that user is and then use that data to set filters on this information. So let's say it's a sales rep. I could get their user ID and say, okay, only show customers associated with this sales rep or in their territory or something along those lines. And you'll notice it's really just helping me build a simple SQL statement to gather the data from that data source there. So I click OK, and so now I have my data there. The next thing I'd like to do is go ahead and go to my list layout, and for my list layout, I'm going to go ahead and select company name, contact name, and title. So I'm just selecting a subset of the data that's coming back. DM, can I show uh, in the sorry to interrupt oh, sure. you. Um, there's like a three second lag between you talking and the video, which is fine. Oh, okay. But the only thing is we want to make sure that uh, you just when you say, I'm going to go do this, if you could wait just a couple seconds before a screen populates. Like just right now, I'm okay. seeing the screen. Okay, we'll there, must, so. I wonder, I must have a, a slow network connection. I today. know, I it's crazy. Usually don't What's going on in Texas, man? Okay. So with that said, um, so what I'm doing is on this list builder, list layout, I have a, all the fields that I brought back from the database, and now what I'm going to do is just tell it which, um, lit, or which things I want to actually display for the user. So I'm going to click OK. That saves the information there. I'm going to go ahead and save this overall UX control. And so we have it saved, so it's all good to go. And now that I've changed this, I'm going to say fill container so it takes over the container. When I go back into my working preview, and you'll see in a moment, the system will now on that first page, instead of have a regular page, it has a basically a columnar layout of the records from that database. And I can scroll up through those using a swipe gesture, and the system completely takes care of all of that swiping and moving and other pieces along those lines from there. So I've got more of a now of a traditional kind of mobile environment there. Also, it takes care of a lot of things such as filtering and sorting. So I could say I want to sort on a contact name. You click the contact name up here, and then it will sort that, that column from there. Now, as you'll notice, it's a bit of a busy interface. It's not exactly the cleanest looking. And it's really not taking advantage of what a mobile user interface should look like. So let me go back into my design. So I click back into the design environment. I'm going to go back into my list of customers. I'm going to go to my list properties. And I'm going to scroll down. And you'll notice I have something here called layout type. And so right now I'm using a standard column layout type. But in this case, what we'd like to do is a freeform type. So this gives me a lot more control on how I want my list to be laid out. Instead of just straight columns, I can do something a lot more interesting with that. So with that selected, I'm going to return to my list layout. And you'll notice now, once the screen refreshes, we have a blank screen. And we can literally drag and drop fields on it. And this just takes standard HTML. But one thing that's also nice about Alpha, you'll see in a moment, is the fact that Alpha includes a lot of predefined templates and other things to help kickstart your development. So I'm going to go down the bottom here to predefined templates. I'm going to click on this button, predefined templates. 
And you'll notice that I have a lot of uh, really nice looking templates for how I want to represent my data. So the one I'd like to pick today is level one, level two. So I select that template right there. And then I click OK. And then it adds a little genie there saying, OK, you selected this template. How do we want to have it displayed? So what I want to do is I want to put the company name at level one. And for level two, I'd like to do the contact name. And then once I've selected those, I click OK. Now what this has done very simply is just put in a HTML little template for me. And you'll notice that it's predefined, but you'll notice in here that my field is surrounded by little curly braces. So it's going to dynamically put the company name in there for each row of my list. And I have a whole bunch. You have complete control over this. You can do anything you want because it's just straight HTML that you're actually manipulating your layout with. So I click OK. I, now when I go back into my working preview, you're going to notice now instead of my kind of clunky column or list, I now have a very nice looking kind of phone oriented list of items that are associated with that. So it gives you a lot of control over the look and feel through HTML, CSS, etc. So you can really style your applications to make them look great and match the branding of the company you're working with. So we've got kind of our first panel, our list of customers, but what we want to do is something even more important. When a user clicks on a customer, we want it to automatically go to that second panel and allow the user to edit the data for that client or customer. So we're going to actually take this from a read-only system into a data edit system at this point in time. So I'm going to go back into my design. And you'll notice on my first panel card, I only have list of customers. Now what I want to do is I want to go to panel card number two, which is our second panel card of data. That's this information right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to now insert into that panel card the fields that we're going to use to edit the data. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'll explain why I do this in a moment, I'm going to put in a container which is going to hold my data field. A container is kind of an invisible uh, construct like a div or a span that allows me to manipulate data. The second thing I want to do is I want to put in a button, and I'm going to name that button save to actually save the changes to the data fields that I'm going to make on the second panel. Okay, so. I've got a new, you know, so I've got a little invisible container in there. Now the next step we'd like to do is actually then insert the data edit fields that are needed for us to edit the data. So I'm going to use a shortcut, which is really nice. I could go through and insert one by one by one the text boxes for each one of those fields. But Alpha is a lot smarter than that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button called text box. And instead of typing in the fields for each one, I'm going to use a nice little facility called populate list from a table. And when I click populate list from a table, it opens up a little genie, much like my genie for selecting the data we populated our list with, and asks me first, what is my connection string? So I'm going to select my connection string. So now it knows what database I want to get this information out of. And notice I can have multiple connection strings. So if I'm interfacing with multiple data sources, or uh, I can do that. I'm going to click the table name. And in this case, it's customers. And in this case, I do want to bring back all fields. But I don't want to include the data binding information for now. I just want to kind of get my field set up, because I'm going to show you an alternative way to kind of connect into it. So now that I have my connection string and table name, I click OK here in the right-hand corner. And you'll notice that then the screen is updated with each uh, field from the database, and it's telling me two things, the field and the character type. So in this case, C and for us is a text field or a character field from that standpoint. And once I look that, it looks OK. I can click OK. And you'll notice now in a few moments it's creating the fields for me automatically. So it's actually gone through, and in my container here, it's added those fields in there. 
So we now have sort of a template, sort of an empty template for our field. So if I go back into the user interface and show you, at this point in time, if I click on it, nothing happens yet. I'm going to show you how to do that next. But if I do go to my next uh, panel card, you're going to notice now that I have basically my fields ready to go, and it's not super pretty yet, but I've got my fields that are ready to go. They're not, and I've got my button that's ready to go. So now that I've got my structure, I can now go back in and add the behaviors so that when I click on a item, it's going to automatically populate those fields, and it's also going to navigate me to that second step. So I'm going to go back into my design mode. Um, before I step on this, uh, Dave, is everything coming across okay? I think we still have a lag, but hopefully it's, it's going a little smoother. This is Nick Kath here. Dave had to leave, so I'm taking over the off. Um, the lag's okay. Okay, so thank you, Nick Kath. Uh, is it still coming through okay? I mean, coming through just fine. Thank you, Dion. Okay, good. Thank you. And if you see any gotchas, interrupt me from that standpoint. Sounds good. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to list customers because the user is going to click on something in the list, so we're going to add the behavior to that. So I'm going to open it up, and we have this button here called list properties. So I'm going to do a couple things here. First thing I'm going to do is on my list properties, I'm going to scroll down a little bit until I find something that says has detailed view. So the idea behind this is that my list is going to have an associated detail view, which I've already created the fields for, that it actually knows how to populate the data in the list into that detail view. And so I'm going to select that to enable that. And you'll notice something that happened immediately. First, the, uh, it, it, nothing happened on this screen, but it added a new um, little button up here or tab called detail view. So it's now saying, great, okay, you want a detail view for this list. Tell me more about it. So I'm going to click in the detail view, and in the detail view, I have a series of settings that I have to kind of control how the detail view will be related to the list of customers. So the first thing I'm going to do is it's asking me the detail view type. If I use field map, I'm going to literally map each row in the list to a specific uh, um, control on my user interface. So I have very fine granular control. But in this case, what I'd like to do is I'm going to select container, and I'm going to select the container that I built that surrounded all of those controls. Because I know it uses the same field name in the database, this saves me a lot of time because it's basically the list is going to look in that container and say, oh, okay, here's all the fields that are associated. And since the names match, it works. It just saves me a lot of time from there. And the idea is to get it up and running to test with your users and then go back in and refine and improve from there. Now, the other thing I would like to do, which is very important, is I go to Table Properties. So I need to tell the detail view a few more little pieces of information about how I want it to operate. So I click on there. It knows it's going after the customer's table, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it the primary key is the customer ID. And the reason I do that is obviously when it does any kind of edit process to the detailed data, it needs to know what the primary key field is to relate the data to it. Now the other thing I want to do is I'm going to deselect allow insert and allow delete. I really only want this to be an update user interface. I could have it where I could add buttons for inserting new records and deleting records, but for the purposes of our demonstration, I only want to use allow update from there. And you'll notice in here also, even though I don't have activated my security framework, I have the ability to secure all these buttons and these behaviors within the system. So for instance, if only certain people are allowed to update things or delete things, I can enable that within the system there. So I click OK. So now I have set up my detail view where when a person clicks on a list in the customers, it's going to automatically update the field information on the, uh, in the detail record for me. And you'll notice I've done zero coding so far. This is all point and click to get to me that first prototype uh, development error. Now, there's one other thing I'd like to go ahead and do while I'm here, is that I want to go ahead and add a behavior so that when the person clicks on the customer list, it not only populates all the detail fields, but actually takes the user to the panel card to show them 
those details. Right now, it would automatically update the fields, but then you wouldn't see anything because you're still on panel card number one. So I go into list property, I scroll down, and in my list I have a series of behaviors on select, on double click, on click, on right click. So I kind of can trap when someone does something. In our case, we want to use the on click event. So I click the three ellipses is here to open up our editor. And I'm going to create a JavaScript action called show detail. So I'm creating a new little action. The neat thing about this is this is basically just going to generate JavaScript. For our purposes, though, I can use kind of a point and click interface to create this action. So I've named it show detail. I click OK. It's added in there, but then I want to double click on this to actually open up my editor. This is called the Action JavaScript Editor. And the idea behind this is that I can use point and click to generate the behaviors I want to. So, and the behaviors don't have to be single. They can actually be a series of events handling or doing together. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Action. And then you'll notice I have a ton of different actions that are built into the system. Opening other forms, graphing things, putting a, a, a map on the interface. All these kind of things are available for me. So in my case, I want to do a panel. So I'm going to do what's called a panel action. So I double click on panel action. It opens up my detail and it's saying what action do I want to use. And the action I want to do is something called set the active panel. So I'm going to tell the system make this panel visible. And so I click set active panel. It's now asking me, okay, great. Well, what target panel do you want to be active? I'm going to select the second panel card. And then it's going to ask me, well, do you want to animate that? And I'm going to say, yes, I would like it to be animated. So by pointing and clicking, it's actually now created a new action. Now, the reality of what's going on, and this is kind of cool, is that all it's really doing is generating JavaScript. So I click this little button called View JavaScript, and it's telling me, well, that is this piece of JavaScript here. And the neat thing about that is once you kind of get to know the system, you could literally have coded this JavaScript right into it and be done with it. But for people who are just kind of coming up to speed on JavaScript, this allows them kind of to get going, get things done as they learn the language and they learn the capability from there. So I click Close. I save that. And I'm just backing out through there. I'm going to run that action. So now I have set it up so that when I click on the list customers, it's going to populate the detail field, but also show you me those fields for there. So let me go ahead and go into my working preview. I'm on my first page. I'm going to go ahead and select this field right here. And you'll notice something. And it probably happens very quickly on yours, but it, it actually populated the fields with the detail data, and it navigated to that second panel card. I can go back. And I can click another one here, and you'll notice that it's automatically. So all of that kind of management of putting data, updating the fields, there was no code written. It was all point and click. So I have actually a functioning interface. Now that's all fine and dandy, but now I want to actually do what's called a CRUD operation, where I actually want to update the database with the information there. So I'm going to go back into my development system. And what I want to do is I've got a Save button on my detail. So when I edit my detail record, I want to have the ability to click Save. And when I click Save, it's going to do two things. One is it's going to save that data to, in this case, our list. And then what it's going to do is navigate back to the list to show the list. So I kind of save and update from there. Now, I'm going to come back to this, but the important distinction you're going to know, and why don't I show you, and then I'll, I'll explain a little bit more what's going on there. So with my Save button, you'll notice that I have a JavaScript action called click. And so I can add a behavior to this button through the click event. And you'll notice, and I'll scroll down, there are a number of different events. So I can track things like swiping gestures, double click, down hold, tap, all these kind of things there. So it allows me in a mobile environment to actually have the user intuitively interface with my user interface by using swipe gestures and things like that, which is very powerful and very exciting. For our purposes, it's a simple button, so when you click on it, it's going to do the behavior. So I click the click event. It opens up my Action JavaScript editor. 
So now I'm going to add the behaviors through the action JavaScript. I click add new action. It brings up my big list of different actions. Now what I'm going to do here is a list action, which is kind of save the data back to the list. So I'm going to type in the letters LIST, and it filters all of my action JavaScript to a some small subset. So in our case, we want the list control action. So we're going to take some behavior. In this case, we're going to save the data that we modified back into the list. So I click OK. It brings up my there, and the action I would like to do is a list detail view action since we're working in the list detail view. So I've selected that action there. The second thing we're going to do is since we're doing a list detail view, it's saying, well, which list are you working on? You could have multiple lists on the same screen. So I'm going to select list customers. Now it's asking me, great, okay, I know you want to do something with this list. What do you want to do? In this case, for the detail view action, we want to submit detail view edits to the list. So any edits that are made to the detail records, it's going to be submitted back to the list. So I click OK. Now I'm going to actually perform that behavior. So now whenever I hit save, any changes to my detail records will be saved back to my list. But I want to do one other thing. I want to go ahead and add a second action where once the detail view record has been updated, I want to go back to my first panel. And I kind of showed you that before, but what I can do is I can go into Add New Action. That opens up my action JavaScript. In this case, it's a panel action. So I'm going to type the word panel up in filter list. I'm going to select panel actions, which is the one that came up from the filtering. And I'm going to click OK. So it tells ask me, OK, well, what action do you want to do? In our case, we're going to do what we did before, which is set the active panel. The target panel we would like to go for is we want to take it back to panel card number one. That's the panel that holds the list. And in this case, I do want it to animate. So I've set my second action JavaScript that when someone clicks that button, it's going to save the data back to the list, and then it's going to navigate to them. So I can go in there, and again, if I wanted to learn what the JavaScript was, I could look and click on the action and show the JavaScript, and it will show me what that JavaScript is. I could literally paste it, copy it into another control, learn how to use it from there. So that's good to go from there. So now I've got my two actions. I'm going to click Save. I've now added that behavior to the Save button. So now I'm going to go into my working preview, and let's go ahead and see what's going on here. So I'm going to click on my first record, which is Alfred Futurkisti. It takes me to the second one. You'll notice down here I'm going to modify region. Excuse me. Uh, it's a little wonky when you're in the uh, here. So let me go ahead and move each patch. Let me go back. Go back there. Okay. And I'm going to call this um, REG uppercase. And I'm going to click my Save button. Ugh. Always something in a demo that does this. There we go. And now you'll notice something very interesting. Um, if you'll notice in the upper right corner of this record, and it's a little hard to see, and I'll move it off in a second, you're going to see a little orange um, like uh, indicator. And so I'm going to scroll, to, or I'm going to go back here, and you'll notice that. Up in this right corner, there is a little orange indicator. And what that means is that this record is dirty, meaning that I have modified this record. But what I said before, and this is for important, and this is really going to come into when we talk about disconnected in a few moments, is that basically I've edited the information for that record locally on the device. But it's not been persisted back into the uh, server, meaning it's not in the database yet. In fact, if I come out and go back in, and look at this record, you'll notice that my edit for region did not take, which is okay. That's kind of what I, it's part of what I wanted to show you there. So what I want to do is this, is I'm going to go back into my design mode. I'm going to go to my header here, and I'm going to go ahead and add a new button. And so I'm going to go to my other controls and add a button in here. So I'm putting a button up in the header. 
and I'm going to go save to database. Okay. So I've just named this button save to database. And I want to add a behavior on there. What this will do is any changes I've made to that list, I'm going to go ahead and persist them back to the database. So with much like I did before on this button, I'm going to go to my click event. I'm going to click on that click event. I'm going to add a new JavaScript action script. So I'm going to click add new action. And in this case, it's a list control action, much like we had before. And I go to my action name. And I'm going to do what's called a list detail view action, because it's similar to that save to the list, what we did before. The list we want to work on is list of customers. And the action we want to take is submit list edits to the server. So any edits that have been made to that list, we now want to go ahead and save them into the database on the server. And I click OK. I can see my list control action there. I can click Save. Now when I run this, if you'll see the following, we have a similar thing, but we now have this new button up here. So I'm going to click on Alfred's. I'm going to go ahead and change region to REG. When I click the Save button, you're going to notice one thing is that it's showing me my record has been updated, the data has been changed to my list, but it's still just in my list. But watch what happens now when I click Save to Database. You'll notice there was a little time there, and then you'll notice that my little caret went away, or my little uh, indicator went away. So now that data has been saved from the list back into the database. Now, why is this important? And in fact, if I go out and come back into the working preview, and if I go into this record, you'll notice now that that REG is coming back from the database that's been persisted correctly. So this is super critical to one of the most powerful features of Alpha Anywhere. Basically, I just showed you how to create, with no coding, a fully disconnected application. Because this is the cool thing. When I first load in this application, it pulls all that data back from the database and stores it in this list control. Now that I have that data cached locally, I can now manipulate that data using point and click. So in this case, I click in here. I change this region to be 456. I click Save. I've now updated my data on the list. And therefore, if I didn't have a server connection, that would still work. I could be editing data to my heart's content. And then, and you can do this automatically, once you're reconnected back into your server through the internet or wherever, through Wi-Fi or your cell site, I can click or have the system automatically detect that and persist the changes back to the database. And so the powerful aspect about that, which is really cool, is the fact that now I can create fully disconnected applications with, little or, with no coding, and, I, and it just works, and it handles that and it saves it uh, on the local interface from there. And that is super powerful because it is very hard to create a disconnected. And what's really neat about that is built into it, it handles all the conflict checking. Like let's say someone else changed a record on the server and you're trying to submit that, it would detect that and give the opportunity to say, yeah, overwrite it or mine. It has all of those controls to be able to, for you to manage that there. So I know that was a little bit step by step, but I wanted to show you how you could then create a disconnected app by using and saving the data to your local list, and then from there persisting it back to the database. Now I'd like to show you two other things real quick before we open it up for questions. The first thing I want to show you is that, is that, you know, this is kind of a pretty boring interface if we look at it. You know, we, we, it's kind of like, you know, 1980s text boxes. But what's really neat about the system is that it makes it easy for you to create compelling user interfaces. So what I'm going to do is, you notice I have this container around these fields. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change that container type to something called absolute layout. So containers are these invisible controls that you can change and modify and have them do sort of magical new things in terms of how you work with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this container right here that holds all of my background pieces has a background image. So I already have a background image in my system 
So I'm going to select that background image. In this case, it's a scanned um, uh, insurance form. So I took an insurance form and just scanned it into an image and added it to my system. So you'll notice I have a quick preview of it there. So I've selected that image I want to be for the background. I click OK. And again, I see a preview of it. And I click OK. So nothing exciting yet. But what I've said is all the controls here are going to have a background that looks like a form. And so the next thing I need to do is I go over to my uh, uh, properties, and I have absolute positions for control. So I click on this button here, and it's going to open up a really cool little editor. Where on there, you're noticing here in the middle, I have my scanned form. On the left, you're going to see over here, I have my different fields and buttons. So that button for save is right here, so I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to add that button onto my form right here. I'm going to add my company name right here. And I'm going to add my address right here. And for giggles, I'm going to add the contact title right here. So basically, instead of using HTML, CSS, anything else, I'm literally absolute positioning my fields over an existing graphic. And this graphic doesn't have to be a form. It could be a picture of a body for like collecting data for a person. It could be a map of you know where you're going to enter in data on a map. What your your imagination is unlimited in terms of this. Now when I click OK, I save this. I'm going to go into my working preview, and since it's a bigger image, I'm going to go ahead and change this to iPad 4 vertical because this would more be like a tablet user interface. Now when I click on this item right here, you'll notice that instead of that boring list of fields. I literally am showing this list with the button, with the information changing right here. And so these are live fields, so I could change this to be, you know, 5445 or whatever it happens to be. I could have check boxes and everything else. And when I click Save, all of those behaviors to save the data to the list are all handled for me. So I didn't have to change any code. I'm just really giving a different visual interface for the user to manage data. And again, everything else works the same. You'll notice I go in here to this one, and I'm going to change this to 2311. I click Save. You'll notice now that two of my records have that little orange indicator. And when I click Save the database, both those orange indicators are gone and sent back to the system there. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you on this interface, and then we'll open it up to uh, discussion, is that Alpha has a very rich set of controls. And so if you'll notice in here, I'm going to go to panel card three, which is that third panel card. I'm going to go to data controls, and I'm going to add one here called map. Okay? And I'm going to insert my map in here. So Alpha has a set of pretty nice pre-made controls like maps, charts, calendars, uh, spin list, button list, everything you need to do there to add into it. And the beauty of that is that it will handle those pieces from right there. So now let's say we want to go ahead and add a button to my second uh, layout when we're looking at a detail record. I'm going to do this very quickly, so it's going to lag a little bit, but follow along. I'm going to create a button, and I'm going to call that button map, map it. Okay. I'm going to go to my action JavaScript, much like I did before. I'm going to add some behaviors to the click event. I'm going to go into my Action JavaScript Editor. I'm going to click Add New Action. In this case, I want to do a map method. Okay, So I've got built in, not only do I have the map control, but I have a whole series of behaviors that have been pre-coded for me so I don't have to write a whole bunch of JavaScript or anything else. And I click OK. It now gives me a genie where it's asking me what the map ID is. It's actually asking me for the action. So what do you want to do with this map? Let's go ahead and add the uh, a marker to a map. Now it's asking me, OK, great, you want to add a marker to the map. Where do you want to get that location or address? In this case, uh, it's saying explicit, like I could type in an address. But I want to make this dynamic. So I'm going to actually put controls on component. And the controls I want to read are Address, city, 
postal code and country. So it knew that I had some fields on my user interface that I could look at for that address information. So I click, bear with me, OK. So now I've added a, a little piece of behavior that when I click on that, whatever the current address is in that form will show on the map. Now the second thing I want to do, which you're probably getting very used to, is that once I click that button, I actually want to show the map. So I'm going to add a new action. In this case, it's a panel action. The action name in this case is set active panel, and the panel name is panel card 3. Now notice that after a while, you'll probably just want to copy and paste the JavaScript in because it will be a little faster, but for our purposes here, I'm using the action JavaScript builder. So I have my Google Map method. I have my panel action. I click Save. I now go into my working preview. I select an account. I find my map. And, oh, I made a mistake. My form doesn't have a map on there. So let me go back in here. I'm going to go to my absolute layout. And what I actually need to do is take my new button and add that in next to my old button. And I'll put that somewhere where we can see it very nicely. And I could style that button, put a little, make it like a little graphic, all those kind of things from there. So now we go back into our working preview. Click there. Notice we have our new button here. When I click Map It, you'll notice that it is immediately mapped on my map, a full Google map showing me that location. And if I go back a page and go back, and I select, let's say, uh, Bone App, and I say Map It, it's dynamically pulling that data, and it's putting that map where uh, we think. And there's a huge amount of other controls you can do it. So as you've noticed that within a matter of 30 minutes, I created a, a customer contact database, fully edited on a mobile platform, with a form filling capability, so it's easy for people to use, and a full mapping. And I could easily expand this with charting, uh, your limit, eyes the limit. And then once I've developed this bad boy and ready to go, and I will call it a bad boy, if I then, I could deploy this instantly onto a server and then someone with a web browser on a mobile device could hit it and immediately start using it with security, obviously. But now, built in with Alpha Anywhere is a magical new button called Phone Gap. And I truly think it's magical. And when you've developed your solution, you click Phone Gap. You put in your Phone Gap credentials because basically you have an account. And by the way, accounts are free for Phone Gap, so you can get a free account. Excuse and me. And then you Dion. put in what platform you want to build. Oh yes. D sorry to interrupt. Uh, and I know you're probably towards the end, but just wanted to mention that we are 60 minutes in now. Okay. Well, I've got one more minute, and then I'll be done. Uh, so the Android, uh, you pick the platform you want to go, you click Save and Upload to Build. Basically, it transports the data up onto your application, not the data, but the application onto PhoneGap. It packages it. It sends you back a QR code, and you can literally run it on your Android device as a native app in a matter of a few minutes. And it has all the functionalities you see there, along with the capability of uh, tapping into the uh, underlying hardware for motion, GPS, uh, camera, every other facility that's available. And all of that, you'll notice that I didn't have to rewrite anything. Everything you saw right there would run as a PhoneGap app immediately uh, upon my build and upload to the server, along with any security protocols that I've put in there. So at that point, that's kind of the end of my CAM demo. Uh, so I'll open it up for questions. All right. Thank you so much, Dion. That was excellent. I have a question here already, and this is about databases and integration. So the question is, could you give us a high-level overview about how databases work in Alpha? Can you go beyond the platform, that is, integrate with databases built in Rails or something else, and how you can query the databases? Which sure. Um, built into Alpha is the concept of something called a connection string. And what a connection string is, is basically when I open that up, and let me go ahead and create a new one here, 
basically, Alpha understands all the different major types of databases out there. Uh, DB2, Excel, MySQL, SQL Server, all those kind of Postgres. And so it allows you to connect into it so all of the controls and components become aware of that connection string behind the scenes. And so you can then uh, create grids and edit them and do all that. And it takes care of all the CRUD operations for you. But you're not limited to that. If, if for instance, it's not a system that's in here, you can write your own sort of uh, classes to connect to that back-end system. Let's say it's a web service, uh, much like Dropbox. And then what you can do is within your user interface, you can call those classes. And that's why I like to say there's a rich development system underneath the point-and-click aspect, so you're never limited to it. So, for instance, you could actually wrap .NET classes and use those in the system if you're with a client that uses .NET. Ruby, um, JS Node, you could actually call JS Node and be able to do that. And the system is built so that it allows you to easily integrate third-party platforms into it. It's a little bit more work than just selecting one of the pre-defaulted connection screens in there, but way to go. And then what you can do is once you've built that, um, when you make your calls, you don't have you could either use our point and click methodology, you can have your views and actually custom code your SQL directly, or you could call store procedures directly on the back end to populate the data. There's it's it's open however you want to in, uh, integrate with your back end systems. And there's no limit to that. All right. Thank you, Dion. Do we have any other questions for now? All right. Thanks for your time, everybody. And thank you, Dion. This was great. If Thank you. And I got to tell you, I really appreciate everybody taking the time to visit with us. Alpha Anywhere is not only a, a great tool to build solutions, it's a fun tool. You can get things done very quickly. You can generate very powerful applications with no coding. But very important is when you're ready to get into the next level, you have that rich development system available for it. And now with the phone gap implicate in our implementation, and the tight integration between PhoneGap, you're able to take your what you're running and quickly turn it into apps that you can deploy on mobile platforms. And as you can see, I mean, I think most people probably watch WWDC. It is becoming so important that Apple changed its whole beta testing philosophy with the new test flight capability because there were so many people who wanted to develop. They want to make it easier for people to develop, deploy applications in a beta phase. So check it out. Alpha is a great tool. It's a lot of fun. It's sim essentially limitless what you can do. Uh, and the neat thing is you can do it quick. So thank you, Niket. Thank you, Dion. And as a last comment, I'd just like to remind everybody that Alpha also offers excellent and very economical hosting through our partner Zebrahost. So if you'd like to know about that, please feel free to email me. And for all your questions about using the platform and technical stuff, you have Dion's contact, I believe, through the organizers at FinCap Dev. So that's it for now. Thank you, everybody. Thanks again, Dion. And Thank you. And we'll hear from you soon.